Senator Audio Ketch has brought to the Senate what uh, he's calling the Creative Economy Support Bill. Um, the basis of uh, this bill basically is uh, to do three things. Number one is to establish mechanisms for support of people in the creative industry. Number two is to enhance the contribution of the creative industry to the economy. And it also establishes a creative fund. All right. Now, the bill has, uh, the idea behind the bill is to bring together everyone in the creative industry from artists um, to uh, architects, anyone who's actually, if you actually look at uh, what it means by creative industry, they are saying that um, they are referring to this as all activities or trade by persons that produce uh, artistic, cultural or innovative goods and services and uh, they're including fashion, publishing, advertising, crafts, music, audio, visual and performing arts, video, film and imaging photography, gaming and animation, graphic design and web design that originate from creativity, skill and talent, and whose exploitation may result in the creation of wealth and livelihood through the generation and exploitation of intellectual property, knowledge and technology. So of course, um, it establishes obligations of the government, especially in supporting the creative economy. And um, the idea basically here is to try and ensure that the policies around uh, the creative economy are aligned. Okay? It's also important to state that this bill is actually going to be administered under the um, Ministry of Trade. Okay? Now, it seeks to create uh, what it's calling the Creative uh, Industry Guild. And in essence, a guild basically is an association um, for, of people coming together, right? The only difference here is that for this guild, it's being created um, under an act, or rather pursuant to an act. Of course, in Kenya, the freedom of association is there, and um, people are free to join uh, whatever associations they want and uh, to participate uh, in the objectives of that association. This is a good idea, but it's also a bit problematic in the sense that some of the benefits that are gained uh, because of being a member of the guild can only, uh, cannot be gained by people who are not members of the guild. And if the idea really is to try and ensure that uh, you are creating an environment where the creative economy can thrive, then it becomes very uh, difficult. It's almost ex exclusionary in a sense, because on one hand, it says that to be a member of the guild, it's voluntary, right? No one is being forced. However, when it comes to some of the benefits of the people, uh, the benefits that will be issued by uh, the advisory board, they can only be accessed by people who are members of the guild. Then there's also the question of uh, discipline of people in the guild. Um, remember, it's taking creative uh, people from all um, all walks of life, right, from all sectors of the economy. It's not restricting itself to one or the other. So you can actually be thrown out of the guild, you know, you can be ejected from the guild. So there is a benefit you get from being a member of the guild, although it's not mandatory, right, but then also there's a lot of uh, what I would call government control in how the guild works and operates. The other thing as well is that uh, the advisory board that is, be, that is established under this uh, bill will have a secretariat that will be drawn from the Ministry of Trade, which means a lot of the work will actually not be done by creatives, but will be done by people in government, right? Whether it's uh, questions of uh, creating programs, whether it's a question of uh, building and maintaining uh, relationships, whether it's uh, identifying opportunities. So uh, there's a lot of that um, happening. Then. There's also the question of how do, you, how do you restrict access to certain benefits? For instance, if tax incentives are issued, how do you only restrict tax incentives to people who are members of the guild and not to other people uh, in the creative economy? There's also a question of overlap because many of the proposals that are being made here, some of them have also been made under either other bills. I think we have a, we have a creative industry bill that uh, is still in parliament. But then you have a fund that is being created under this, which is a creative fund. But remember, the creative fund is also dealing with creatives in different uh, places or in different sectors of the economy. So there's that question of, are we creating too many funds? Um, first, 
will this fund how will how will this fund be different from other funds uh, for instance under the Kenya Film Classification Board you have a fund you know the film industry has their own fund but people in the film industry can also be members of this guild and access uh, this fund so there are questions to be asked there is an overlap of uh, responsibilities and obligations between um, the board that will be created here and what other ministries are actually uh, pursuing. So those are some of the challenges that uh, we've been able to note by um, looking at the bill. Also the fact that uh, the board that is being established is unincorporated, which means it cannot uh, own any property in its own name, it cannot sue and be sued, it does not have perpetual succession, and the fact that it's just advisory means that whatever they come up with or whatever they agree to could also be you know, easily ignored. There's then the questions of representation. Well, the bill is uh, clear that um, those uh, women, youth, and uh, persons with disabilities who are treated as a special class under the constitution will be represented. If you look at the representation in the board, there is no clear representation for youth, women, and persons with disabilities. It's only assumed perhaps that one of those groups will dominate someone. So they, there's probably going to be need to ensure that uh, those specific um, groups are actually provided for under the bill. The Creative Economy Support Bill 2024 has gone through the first reading at the Senate. And now uh, the committee on that de will deal with this matter in the Senate will be taking uh, public participation in the form of memoranda. So the clerk of the Senate has actually issued an invitation to any member of the public who has uh, memoranda that they'd like to write. And the memoranda, they simply mean it has to be in a written form. It could be an email, it could be a letter, uh, it could even be an affidavit if that's what you want. So you just present uh, your feedback to these proposals that are in the bill. The deadline for receiving feedback is the 30th of August, 2024. And um, the email addresses that can be used, you can either deliver a hard copy at the Senate or you send on email. And the email to be sent is clerk.senate at parliament.go.ke. And uh, of course they are saying that you have to copy trade, trade, E I N D tourism C O W M dot Senate at Parliament dot We're going to be providing these emails right here, okay, to be received before Friday, the 30th of August 2024. And in addition to this, the committee of the Senate will actually hold a public hearing at the Senate uh, chambers in Parliament on Monday, the 2nd of September 2024, at 9 a.m. and it's open to them or every member of the public. Now, under Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya, public participation is one of the principles of governance. That for Kenyans, when we are being governed, we have to be given an opportunity to give our views, our thoughts, and uh, our feedback on some of the things that are going on in Parliament. So, it is very important for you as a creative to actually lend your voice to this. If there is anything in the bill that you do not agree with, if there is anything you don't want to be removed, if there is anything you don't want to be added, this is the time for you to do it. The Constitution actually has made it possible for you to speak and raise your voice about some of those issues. Because if you do not do it, then the changes you want will never be captured. And the law will apply to you whether you like it or not, because laws apply to um, everyone. So please take advantage of this opportunity for public participation. Show up even for the public hearings and lend your voice um, to this matter.